Chapter 1 The Beginning, 1, You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Boom Luo Jing's head was rumbling. Boom. His head once again rumbled as his body violently jerked before falling down. Boom. His head smashed onto something hard, causing him to grimace in pain. As he slowly opened his eyes, he could only see a dim, blurry background. In front of him, a silhouette was moving back and forth, as if it was busy closing the window and cleaning up the room. Next to the silhouette was a window, lightning flashed outside, brightly illuminating the room as if it were day. Ow! Luo Jing moaned as he tried to raise his hand to rub the back of his head, but his body wouldn't move. A mixture of pain, itching, and numbness had left it paralyzed. It was as if his limbs didn't belong to him, they firmly laid on the ground beside him like four wooden sticks. Am I dead? His mind was still chaotic. He had a flashback. While taking a shower, he had accidentally touched the power outlet with his wet hands, electrocuting himself in the process. With his own eyes, he watched as a burst of blue electric current emerged between his finger and the sockets, and after which came a pungent smell of burnt flesh as he lost consciousness. His head was in a daze, it seemed like all his memories had turned to mush. Luo Jing opened his eyes as much as he could, trying to figure out what was going on around him. Thud. After another violent rumbling, his head hit the headboard of the bed, filling him with yet another outburst of unbearable pain as he passed out soon after. Nobody knew how long it had been, perhaps one day or perhaps several days, when he finally regained consciousness and could feel his body once more. He heard the soft sound of a door closing. Has mother left already? A girl's voice asked. Yes, she ate breakfast before us and went out to get some groceries. I'm going to leave to visit your auntie soon as well. The familiar voice of a man answered, followed by silence. Luo Jing found himself in a small bedroom. In front of him was a reading desk. He was holding a black pen, writing something on a piece of white paper. A bright light shone from the window to his right, light rain showers fell outside, and the roof of the residence building across the street was soaked through. Suddenly, like a flood breaking out of a dam, a huge and complex wave of thoughts rampaged into his mind. He unconsciously groaned and gripped his forehead with his hands. Countless new memories swarmed into his brain. Garen. My. My name is Garen. Have I traveled to an alternate reality? He couldn't think about anything else, still bearing a headache, he started exploring the memories that had just flowed into his brain. This world was similar to Europe prior to the nuclear age. There were cars, planes, and firearms like guns and cannons, but weapons of mass destruction had not been developed yet. His new identity was a boy named Garen from a middle dot class family. He was 16 years old and his parents were employees of a rubber company. He had a little sister called Inger. The lifestyle was like that of the 20th century Europe, but the memories of his family and his own appearance made it clear that this place was definitely not on earth. Both Garen and his sister were born with dark purple hair and eyes the color of wine. Their hair color was passed down from their father and eye color from their mother. He'd never heard of anyone born with these hair and eye colors on earth. Furthermore, in Garen's memories of history, the most powerful countries in the world were not China, the United States, or Russia. Instead, they were the Yalu Confederation, Weissman Empire, and the Republic of the Tulip. Just like Earth, there were a few hundred other countries of varying sizes and governments. Aside from the difference in names and lifestyle, things were very similar to Earth. People who lived here received education as well, starting from elementary school, then middle school, and finally college. Right now, Garen was attending the third best high school in the province, Shenyang Nobles Academy. It was the first year of school. During the school break, Garen was sick in bed with a fever and actually died, just as Luo Jing died in his world and ended up here. 
BDNVL.M still collecting his memories, Luo Jing started to change clothes. When he snapped out of his trance, he found himself in a small and tidy room, eating a soft cherry cake on the dining table. The palm-dot-sized cake had a creamy-dot-yellow color, and was decorated by a ring made of whipped cream with cherries on top. Luo Jing's mind was still going through Garen's memory. Although they were attending a noble's academy, their parents were barely able to pay the fees by living frugally and working overtime. In order to let both their son and daughter attend this academy, all expenses at home were cut to the bare minimum. Their parents didn't buy new clothes or jewelry, the handsome bonuses and the salary from the rubber company were all used to pay for their tuition. Unfortunately, the two children weren't particularly gifted when it came to studying. Thus, no matter how hard they tried, their rankings and scores were always in the lower half of the class rankings. In the academy, the other students all came from well dot off families. As a result, the siblings started feeling inferior compared to their peers, and that affected their once optimistic personalities. Garen became an introverted weirdo, and the heir became taciturn. You are heading off for school soon, don't fight with your friends, work hard and try to get into a good college. The father, Mr. Lombard, sat across the table and urged him while eating his plate of salad. And you ing air, don't read those fiction books all day, school subjects are your priority. All right daddy, ing air replied. She sat at Luo Jing's right side, wearing a fine white girdle waist sweater. A white corsage on her chest outlined her immature yet fine body line. She was wearing a deep purple bouffant mini skirt and her legs were covered in black leggings. While Ing Air was eating the cake, her two small black shoes were pointed inwards, her head was down, and she looked submissive. Luo Jing silently ate the cake and drank a sip of milk from time to time. He looked at his sister's dress. It flaunted a glowing black silver pin on her chest that looked like a wreath surrounding a logo. This was an indication that she was a student of Shengying Nobles Academy. He looked at his own clothes. A slim dot fit white shirt which had black and silver stripes on the cuffs and neckline. The lower body was also a pair of slim dot fit black trousers, paired with black dress shoes. His uniform looked striking yet delicate. The siblings both had very average appearances, the only highlights being their purple hair and their wine-dot-colored eyes. The sister looked ordinary, with some freckles and acne on her face. Garen himself had messy hair, and his eyes looked empty because the socket sank deep into his face, giving the impression that he had been sick for years. Luo Jing wasn't able to absorb most of the information from Garen's memories until after breakfast. The siblings helped in cleaning up the dishes before going back to their rooms to get ready for school. Brother, have you seen my history textbook? asked Ding Air loudly from her room. Nope, answered Luo Jing, or should we call him Garen now, thoughtlessly. He was also preparing his textbooks. History, geography, etiquette, math and other various subjects, they had more subjects compared to the high schools on earth. There were even swordsmanship and archery textbooks among them. Garen let out a relieved sigh after shoving all the books inside the black backpack. He walked to the window and pushed it open, letting in a moist and cool breeze. Outside the window was an open space between two residential buildings, the ground was covered with a black and gray checkerboard pattern. To the west of the field, some people were lining up behind a brawny man with a sign. The crowd was slowly gathering, and it seemed like they were going somewhere. The letters on the sign spelled, Collins wins. Just below the window, on the first floor of the building where Garen lived in, a woman walked out while pushing a grayish-yellow trolley. It was filled with utensils and cooking materials for making crepes. Whoosh! A white bird flew in front of his window and made a few turns before disappearing again. Entranced by the bird, he suddenly snapped out of his daze, realizing that he was really in a completely different world now, standing on the fourth floor of a building in a totally different environment from the China he knew. Most people outside had either blonde or silver hair, while some had red hair, and their eye and skin colors varied greatly. The language they were speaking and writing in was an alphabetic language like English. 
Having obtained the memories from before, Garen was able to understand it. He was no longer the adult man on planet Earth, but an ordinary boy of only 16 years of age, with an ordinary family, look, and background. Along with that, there was also his weak and ill body. His parents worked every day, from dusk until dawn. He and his sister came home from school once a week and, between school and home, life was boring and linear. He just had to graduate from high school and take part in the national examination. If he was lucky, he'd get into a decent college, have a good degree, and find a well-paying job in the future. He was one among thousands of students that would take the examination. Their parents' greatest expectation for them was to have a decent job. If this kid weren't sick and ill, I might not have successfully traveled into this world, Garen thought with a wry smile. He had a feeling that earlier in the carriage during his coma, it might have been the body of Garen instinctively resisting Luo Jing's consciousness. If Garen had a healthy body, he might have prevented Luo Jing's spirit from ever possessing it. From his memory, this world should still be in the era just before World War II, without large dot scale weapons of war, this is a world similar to mine before the emergence of nuclear weapons. He carefully thought, this isn't what I imagined. There's no magic, no energy, not a Xianxia world, not even a small trace of supernatural events. Thinking of this, he didn't know what to do. When he found out he had traveled to an alternate reality, he had some small expectations. But after scrounging through Garen's memory, he realized that this world was merely one that was decades behind in technology. Oh well, let's take it step by step, recuperating is of utmost importance right now. Garen raised his arms, which were skinny like bamboo sticks, and a helpless smile showed up on his face. Bringing their respective backpacks, the siblings walked outside together and closed the door. Garen walked in the front with garbage bags in his hands, and as they stumbled down the stairs, he carefully observed the other households and the situation of this era. The staircase was dark, each floor only had two households, and every one of them had a brass mailbox on the left side of the door, with names engraved on them. They looked quite old. The residents going in and out were wearing tidy and elegant suits and dresses. Although they had very tired expressions, they moved in a hurry and kept their backs straight, it was natural to say that they just had very fast. Paced lives. Only a small number of households were in poor condition, and some were rented by street vendors. The two walked out of the staircase in silence. Garen disposed the garbage and looked at his sister to his left. Ing Air was a few inches shorter than him, and she was brought in by his stepfather after Garen's father had passed away. Thus, they were not blood dot related, although the two had the same hair and eyes. The relationship between them was not close, not any better than normal friends. As usual, the two got on the school bus, which was already littered with a few students. Chapter 2 The Beginning, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Garen found a seat in the back of the bus next to his sister. He glanced at the students sitting in the seats in front of them and saw that everyone else was also wearing Xingying Academy's uniforms. The girls were dressed like his sister, wearing a white tee dot shirt paired with a black miniskirt and black leggings. On the other hand, the boys were wearing stylish slim dot fit white shirts, black trousers and black shoes. They looked neatly uniformed. The students were chattering in groups, with laughter all around them. Not long after they stepped on, the bus stopped again, and two more students from the academy came in. After many stops in the same manner, two handsome boys hopped on while chatting, one of them was tall and slim, while the other had a sturdy build. Both looked confident and classy, and they immediately drew the attention of the girls on the bus. Garen sat next to his sister and saw her unconsciously staring at the two guys that just boarded the bus. He was comparing himself to them but shook his head helplessly. He looked at them just once more before withdrawing his eyes. There were too many ordinary guys like him sitting at inconspicuous corners on the bus, compared to those two, they were merely foil characters. 
Garen watched as the scenery outside the window flew past. Street lamps stood one by one on both sides of the tidy streets. The surroundings were mostly composed of ordinary dot-looking concrete houses, but occasionally he could see some white marble buildings. The architectural style was a bit similar to the Europe's. From time to time, there were cars speeding past the bus. Mom and Dad told us not to go back home next week, so we need to spend the weekend at school. The company assigned them to a business trip, and since they might not come back this week, they told us to take care of ourselves, setting air in a low voice. Got it, he nodded and replied in his usual tone. Oh right, your rank went up after the last exam. Dad bought you a teddy bear right. So what? Ing Air turned her head, if your grades went up mom would get you something as reward too. Garen smiled and stopped talking to her. Unexpectedly, he noticed that five red transparent numbers slowly emerged in the bottom part of his field of vision. Garen restrained his smile. Shocked for a moment, he looked around, but no one had noticed his peculiar behavior. Those who were laughing continued, those who were chatting carried on with their conversations. Beside him, Ing Air pulled out a history textbook and started silently memorizing. What is this, is it the benefit of traveling to an alternate reality? Garen had read many free web novels before, and some mentioned that people who traveled to alternate realities would have gifts bestowed upon them. He just thought he didn't receive any, but after a while, something unnatural showed up. There were red symbols that apparently only he could see. He focused on the five symbols at the bottom of his vision, and his lips moved silently as he read the information. Strength 0.31, Agility 0.22, Vitality 0.27, Intelligence 0.32, Potential 25%. Right after he finished reading them, a short and brief memory suddenly surged into his mind. Garen closed his eyes and stood still on his seat. A moment later, he slowly opened them back, enlightened. I changed and gained superpowers as a result of electrocution and transmigration. He clearly remembered the whole process of how this power came to be after the mutation, countless coincidences and complex unimaginable changes occurred before this ability was created. When the potential attribute reaches 100%, I can increase one of the other four attributes. Garen was puzzled and looked at the 25% potential, but still could not believe it. Isn't this the same as playing RPG games? I can choose which of my attributes I would like to increase in real life. Garen was aware that in this world, the technology was behind, and thus melee weapons were still used together with firearms. Therefore, if this ability could really improve his attributes, his future would be unimaginable compared to ordinary people. But, this isn't just an illusion, right? Garen thought with a mocking smile, maybe I'm going crazy thinking about getting a superpower. The bus suddenly stopped. We're here, everyone get off the bus. The driver was a man with hard whiskers, he was yelling with his body turned around. The students started getting off the bus one after another. Ing Air pushed Garen lightly to bring him back from his daydream and got off the bus first, carrying her backpack. A line of black school buses was parked near the edge of a huge green lawn, while students of the Xingying Academy were continuously moving toward a group of buildings at the other side, all dressed in the same uniform, white at the top and black at the bottom. At the far end of the lawn stood a swath of buildings. The main building had a white dome with yellow patterns, and around it there were towering buildings with dozens of floors with white domes and dark yellow patterns. In the distance, one could vaguely see large buildings with similar architecture styles. Many students were moving between them, and among them there were some teachers wearing black uniforms. On the edge of the lawn, a skinny boy walked away from one of the buses. He had purple hair, red eyes, and an overall pallid appearance. He looked listless. Garen roughly glanced at the academy's facilities. Looking behind him, he saw a ring of tall white fences surrounding the academy. The buses came in through a white arched gate and were leaving the campus after dropping off the students. This is pretty much like the schools on earth. Garen followed the other students toward the buildings across the lawn. 
Garen is from grade 9, class 2. He moved based on his memories, quickly following the crowd to the left side of the vast campus. He stopped in front of a trapezoidal building and walked up the stairs. The second classroom on the second floor had the brass tag, grade 9 class 2, hanging above it. Garen followed two boys into the class and walked toward his seat near the window in the back of the room. He threw his backpack inside the desk's compartment and began thinking about the five attribute symbols at the bottom of his vision. Since he had only been here for one semester and he was introverted, he had no friends in the class. The first class was mathematics, the professor was a middle-aged woman with a stern face. The material was only of elementary school level. Garen listened for a few minutes and continued minding his own business. The class after that was language, which taught them the language and writing as well as literature of this country. Garen didn't bother listening. The third class was etiquette, but instead of paying attention, Garen was testing the connection between the attributes and his body. When suddenly, the potential attribute number in his vision shook, drawing his attention and making him flinch. Shocked, Garen looked around the class, but no one had noticed it, so he raised his head and looked at the podium. At the front of the class, the etiquette teacher was holding an open rosewood box, which had various gems and jewelry inside. One's own appearance is also a representation of how much respect you have for the people you interact with, and jewelry is one of the key factors in improving one's image. Last class we talked about gold and silver jewelry, and today we will be going over how gems and diamonds are used in fashion. The etiquette teacher was a man wearing an elegant beard and glasses. His expressions were meticulous, giving a natural and elegant vibe. Now you will pass on these gems and observe them one by one. Nobles are not just wealthy in the materialistic way, more important is the nobleness in your heart. Self.discipline, elegance, self.esteem, responsibility, courage, and so on, together with a good image and quality attire. Combine all of these and you can call yourself a noble. If one's only pride is in his lavishness and wealth, then he is merely a parvenu. Garen sat in the back of the room watching as the box was passed on for the students to see. Before he could react, the numbers on the bottom of his vision started changing. The last attribute, potential, started slowly increasing from 25% to 26%, like the second hand on a clock moving up. He paid attention to his classmates as they passed on the box, most of them were just casually glancing through them since they were obviously used to gems and jewelry like these. Only a few students seemed excited when they held the box, as they were the ones from the not-so-well-dot-off families. After waiting for long ten minutes, the rosewood box was finally passed to the chubby kid wearing glasses in front of Garen. He roughly flipped through the contents, and then handed the box to Garen. Here you go. Thanks. Garen carefully received the box. The moment he held it in his hands, he felt his body becoming numb with a tingling sensation that started on his fingers and flowed through his body like the steady flow of cold air inside a fridge. Garen quickly put down the box and fiddled inside with his hands until he found a black and red pearl. That's it. He picked up the pearl lightly, and the cold flow became stronger. At the bottom of his vision in the attribute pane, the potential percentage jumped up crazily like it took drugs, within 10 seconds, from 26%, it rushed to 50%, then 80%, and 100%. As the number reached 100%, Garen felt the black and red pearl in his hand dimmed, as if it had aged. He quickly put the pearl back into the box, and passed it to the last student on his right. Hand sighed. Even then, the box had been in his hands for quite some time. The student to his right was a redhead girl with a ponytail. She looked at him with a frown, took the box and immediately passed it on to the guy in front of her, without even glancing at the jewelry. Garen knew this girl, her name was A.I. Fay. Like him, her family was not well dot off, but unlike him A.I. Fay had good grades and great self.discipline, it could even be said that her personality was somewhat rigid. They were also a little similar in that they didn't have any friends. He didn't bother with the girl since his focus was on the potential percentage that only he could see. 
An unknown flow of air was hovering in his eyes, but it only started after he achieved 100% in potential. He had a feeling that if he focused on one of his attributes for three seconds, this flow of air would jump onto that attribute, increasing it. So it really wasn't my imagination. I really got this superpower. Garen was excited, after living for decades, he unexpectedly achieved his childhood dreams of having superpowers. Even with his temperament, it was a little unnerving. Then, which attribute should I put this flow into? Garen's eyes cruised between the four attributes. Strength, Agility, Vitality, and Intelligence. Chapter 3 The Beginning, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full.Audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation The class was about to end but Garen still hadn't decided on which attribute to enhance. At this point, he finally believed this supernatural ability was actually real. Rai Yining, after the crisp sound of school bells, the etiquette teacher collected his rosewood box and left the classroom. The class went from complete silence to chaos. Garen remained seated in his desk, startled by the mess. He straightened his back and let out a relieved sigh. Suddenly, he felt his belly deflating and quickly covered it with his hands. A sense of hunger. Never felt before. Came from his stomach. He bent down and looked around, checking to see that no one was looking at him. He reached into his pockets and took some blue papers out, each of which had either the numbers 1 or 5 printed on them. Counting the bills, Garen slightly knitted his brows. Only $15 to spend. This is far from enough for one week. Also, I remember eating breakfast just now, but when the potential reached 100% I started feeling hungry again. It seems like the potential wasn't just draining energy from the gem, but also from my body's digestive system. At that moment, someone patted him on the shoulder. Garen, same old spot for lunch. A young male voice came from behind him. Garen turned around and saw the white dot skinned hand of a freckled boy laying on his shoulder. What old spot? The one close to the windows. The boy's name was Kalidor, one of the students Garen was most acquainted with in his class. Last weekend the cafeteria had jasmine tea and dim sum. I wonder what's on the menu today. Another teenager joined them and murmured, if they still have that specialty dark purple fruit jam, I'm ordering it. All right, I'm going to get the goat milk for everyone, so give me your money. Five bucks each. Calador extended his hands. All the students had the habit of drinking hot goat milk before lunch. Right after Calador reached out, a dozen students gathered around him one after another, placing five dollar bills in his hands. I'll have one. I'll have one too. Same for me. These students were nowhere to be seen just now, but when they heard someone was willing to fetch the milk, they all showed up out of the blue. Calador counted the money in a hurry. There's money here for twelve people. Garen, don't you want milk? In case you want something else I can bring it for you instead of the milk, it's okay, you know I don't like goat milk. Garen quickly refused. He pretended to look indifferent, but the truth was that he had no money, so even if he liked it he had to say he didn't. The small amount of money he had was to be spent on more essential things. After all, the old Garen had always used that pretense as an excuse for not buying milk, so the new one just followed his lead. However, Calador had no idea of his true thoughts and always just believed that he didn't like goat milk. Come on. Try it once, it's delicious. I can bring you one. What are you afraid of? It's okay, I really don't like it. Garen refused again. Try it man, it's great. No thanks, I'm good. You guys go ahead. Fine then. Calador shrugged his shoulders and jogged out of the classroom. After a little while, the students chattering all had a carton of goat milk in their hands while Garen had to pretend he was focusing on his schoolwork. He lowered his head and started taking notes. Over the last few days, he had started exercising more frequently. 
The amount of money he had on him was far from enough to satiate his new highly active metabolism. As he smelled the fragrance of the hot milk, his belly started growling again. Fortunately, the loud chattering noises covered it up and no one heard it. He shook his head helplessly, then suddenly noticed the girl on his right, A.I. Fei. Just like him, A.I. Fei was pretending to be studying with her head lowered. She strained as she sucked her stomach inward in an obviously unnatural position, trying to prevent her belly from making a sound. A.I. Fei seemed to have noticed someone staring at her and looked over. When their eyes met, both Garen and A.I. Fei blushed. They roughly understood that they were in the same situation and thus a sympathetic feeling rose between the two. After drinking the goat milk, Garen and the other boys left toward the cafeteria, laughing and chatting. The cafeteria stood in the center of the academy, surrounded by student dormitories. It had the shape of a black cube, with each side containing an entrance. Students were constantly coming in and out through the doors. One could smell the sweet scent of cakes and bread, and hear the noisy students long before walking inside. Garen ate the free lunch together with his acquaintances, finally satisfying the ravenous hunger in his belly. Following the crowd out of the cafeteria, Garen raised his head and looked up at the clear sky. The bright sun shone on his face and he felt a burning sensation. This place really lives up to its name as one of the top 100 schools in the nation. Xingying Nobles Academy probably has the best food among all the ones in Huishan City. The class schedule is different in the afternoon, school would be out at 3. I could go to that place and test the effectiveness of my abilities. Looking again at the five symbols at the bottom of his vision, Garen's eyes glimmered with anticipation. He started recalling all the information he had about the local geography. I have to check out the details of my surroundings. Thinking of this, he looked around, picked a direction that looked vacant, and marched off in big strides, quickly disappearing among the buildings. The orange and oblique light of dawn shone above Huishan City, dyeing the large complex of buildings red. Some high dot rise buildings with pointed and domed roofs reflected the sunlight like mirrors. A breeze of warm air gusted through the city. In the South District, next to the streets west of the well dot known Xingying Nobles Academy, there stood a spacious courtyard built with redwood. In front of the yard, there were simple houses while the back had two huge training grounds. On the corner of the yellow training ground to the left, some youngsters in yellow uniforms were hitting the training dummies under the shade. The sound of impact rang out ceaselessly. A young man in white uniform was walking between them with hands in his back, correcting the boys when they made mistakes. One of the young men stood on the outer rim of the grounds, under the shadow of the surrounding trees. He had purple hair and wine dot red eyes. It was Garen, who discreetly left Shengying Nobles Academy after lunch to come here. This was an ordinary dojo near Shengying Nobles Academy, which specialized in teaching basic martial arts. Garen and two other classmates joined the dojo out of pure impulsiveness, they only wanted to practice martial arts because they noticed that the students practicing here all had a sturdy body and wanted to look as fit as they were. Garen was sluggishly whacking the wooden dummy in front of him. The dummy was as tall as a person and had a dark yellow body covered with rubber. Even if he hit it with great force, his hands would not feel any pain. After a while, he took a break. According to Garen's memory, it wouldn't be wrong to say he didn't have much talent, but he did work very hard at this dojo. He had practiced the White Cloud Dojo's basic combat techniques countless times. However, his talent and his body were just terrible. In this world, without chi or special abilities, anything would be meaningless if one's body was too weak. Leaning against the stout wooden dummy, Garen panted lightly and organized his thoughts. In the White Cloud Dojo, the dojo master was rarely seen. The ones teaching the techniques are usually the dojo master's disciples who have mastered the basics. The one teaching us. Garen's eyes landed on the young man in white uniform, that is Luoya, and there is another girl named Sharmila. The basic combat techniques I learned should be good enough, but my body is too weak, 
making it impossible for me to stand out among the others. Garen had something planned in his mind. As he was thinking about this plan, he started exercising his body again, following the routines he already knew by heart. A few minutes later, from the far side of the training ground, a girl in a white uniform with a ponytail hastily walked over and talked with Luoya, who was standing among the students. Luo yet decisively walked toward the exit, giving the impression that someone was waiting for him outside. The ponytail girl in the white uniform was Sharmila, who was now covering for Luoya. Most of the students were familiar with her, so no one questioned the substitution. Garen glanced at Sharmila. Her slender legs were her greatest pride. She was tall and had a slim waist, with white skin and a charming face. In the continuous demonstration of the correct positions and movements of the techniques, her chests bounced slightly, showing amazing tension and suppleness. A lot of boys who were practicing peeked at her now and then. Some of them seemed to be hitting the training dummies much harder than before. One of the students made a mistake on purpose and was spotted by Sharmila. She scolded him with a smile and flicked his forehead. I love it when assistant Sharmila is teaching us. This is the best. The two boys next to Garen mumbled. Garen, of course, did not waste his time replying. I didn't save my money to look at pretty girls. I came here to practice combat skills. All right, pick a partner and let's start one dot on point one training. We'll rank everyone later. Same exercises as usual, the five who placed the worst will clean up the field. Sharmila raised her voice and announced. Garen's movements gradually died out and he squeezed the dummy's arm in anger. In the dojo, they had to do one dot on point one ranked combat daily. Garen was consistently one of the people cleaning up the grounds since he rarely won a match, and thus could never relax after the training sessions. He was one of the worst among the twenty students in this class. Hearing that ranked sparring was about to begin, his eyes landed on a girl with short silver hair. He had lost to this girl last time, once more joining the ranks of his fellow cleaners. On the other hand, the girl did not notice his gaze. She was focused on chatting with a female friend of hers, occasionally laughing out loud. Sharmila inspected the students, nodding satisfied at the growing eagerness in their eyes. The combat techniques of our White Cloud Dojo are simple but effective. Even an ordinary person can instantly use forces up to 1.5 times greater than his original strength if they master this technique, but only five among them have mastered it. We will observe them for a few more days, but if no one else improves we'll have to pick two among these five and teach them better techniques, promoting them to elite students. It was clear to her. No matter how much one practiced the basic combat technique, the effectiveness of the strength amplification was at most 1.5 times, and the training results were also very limited. Moreover, it was hard for ordinary people to master the technique. Only those who were truly interested in martial arts and had great perseverance could go one step further while the rest simply did not have enough willpower to practice advanced martial arts. Most dojos used this method to pick out the talented students for training. Garen started preparing for the upcoming battle by reviewing the basic combat techniques and warming up his body while focusing his vision on the five symbols. I should be able to use the basic combat technique to train my body while speeding up my growth with the help of attribute enhancements. This way, I have faith that no one would be able to surpass me in training speed. I wonder just how much the attribute enhancements would change my body. He carefully went through the five symbols in his vision. Strength 0.31 Agility 0.22 Vitality 0.27 Intelligence 0.32 Potential 100% Garen's focus switched back and forth on these five attributes, but no extra information from his memory showed up, so he stopped, disappointed. Okay, let's begin, Sharmila's voice echoed over. Chapter 4 the beginning, for, you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. 
Endless fantasy translation the martial arts dojos in this world were similar to the Taekwondo dojos back on Earth. Their primary purpose was to promote physical exercise and workout. There existed a dojo ranking system, but most dojos were basically superfluous and non-lethal, aside from those high-ranked traditional ones. The ones not fighting for the top rankings were only useful for exercising and for showing off. In this culture, martial art was similar to music or dancing, a part of the regular educational curriculum aimed at making the children more versatile and well-rounded. Garen followed other students and spread out into pairs. Facing him was the same girl from last time. She had ordinary looks. A slim waist, flat chest, and her silver hair glimmered crimson under the fading sunlight. Rank 15, Darius. Rank 16, Garen. The two stood facing each other, then greeted by using their ranking and names. Begin. Sharmila yelled. Garen and Darius stopped worrying about the other combatants and focused entirely on each other's movements. The basic knowledge passed on to them did not contain any special moves or advanced fighting techniques. It was only a simple exercising routine and the explosive force technique. In Garen's memory, there were no special fighting moves, the Sodot called combat training was just two people fighting based on their own combat experience, with the only difference from any other fight being that they could use the explosive force technique, thus allowing their strength to be heightened for some attacks. In fact, this was the dojo's sole purpose in having a one-on-one -on -one combat training. The main goal was to test their students' raw strength and potential. At this point, Garen stopped thinking superfluous thoughts. He pounced onto Darius and threw a punch towards her left shoulder. He had not used the attribute enhancement yet, wanting to see how strong his body truly was. While his fist was still in the air, Darius dodged to the right and swatted Garen's chest with her shoulder. Neither of them was very agile and so Garen could easily react to the counterattack. He turned his body and tackled her with his own shoulder. After a loud bump of shoulders clashing, both backed off a few steps. They then both charged and ended up in a grapple. Like before, they threw punches at each other without any form or routine. In the previous fight, Garen had been exhausted after wrestling for a while, which led to his defeat. However, this time Garen made use of a brief gap when the two split apart and were both gasping for air to focus his attention on the five attributes at the bottom of his vision, stopping for some seconds on strength. Clink, a quiet sound ringed inside his head. Garen felt his muscle swelling up. In a blink, he felt as if he had grown larger. Looking again at the strength attribute, the number had increased from 0.31 to 0.41. This incredible change was the result of just an increase of 0.1 points. Garen's heart skipped a beat, and he looked at Darius who was still panting. Without a word, he charged forward again, but this time he bent his legs and applied a heavy force against the ground to gather momentum. The result was a distinct increase in his speed. His strength turned to force, and force turned into acceleration. It was an abrupt change that Darius could not have foreseen. She tried to dodge to the side like the last time, but it was too late. She was tackled by Garen while her balance was off. Darius sat on the ground after being knocked over with a flip. It seemed she could not get up. She gasped for air with a stunned expression. Her eyes were filled with shock and disbelief as she stared at Garen. Huff. You. She was panting heavily, you actually still have. This much strength. Garen clearly felt the changes that took place in his body, and he was joyous but also confused. With no time to check on Darius, he went back to Sharmila to record the combat results. Sharmila had noticed Garen's sudden burst of strength. Even though Garen had a weak body, he was one of the five students she had noticed this time. After recording the results, she nodded at Garen with a smile, go rest for now. Yes, Assistant Sharmila. Garen wiped away the sweat with his sleeve and sat on the ground to take a break. Half of the students were sitting on the ground like him, waiting for the others to finish their fight. Watching the matches taking place under the shade, 
Darren slowly felt the full effects of the growth in his strength. He raised his skinny arms, shockingly discovering a trace of contour of muscle, instead of the skin and bones from before. Just by enhancing strength by a tenth of a point I'm already much more powerful. My strength has increased at least by a third. Now, at the very least, I think I would rank 15th among the students, but probably not much higher. This is still a great improvement compared to before. What kind of changes would other attributes bring? Agility, vitality, and intelligence. If these attributes could enhance my body in the same manner. Garen's heart was filled with anticipation. It seems I have to find the reason behind the increase in potential. If I can keep enhancing the strength attribute, I could probably join the dojo as a disciple. Then I would receive a handsome stipend from it. The increase in strength did not bring many changes to Garen's school life, other than the fact that now he eats a lot more. He stopped caring about school work, focusing entirely on grasping the true essence of the attributes. In order to continue filling the potential meter, he started paying attention to the jewelry and gems that the girls were wearing. Also, after school, he would go to jewelry stores and pretend he wanted to buy something. After visiting every single jewelry store in the city, Garen had only found items that could increase his potential meter at a thrift jewelry shop. One was a sapphire and another was a tiny ruby on an earring. After touching these gems, his potential meter raised to 89%. Unfortunately, he did not find any more special gems similar to those after the earring. Garen, by now, had also discovered what appeared to be a rule for the gems that could fill his potential meter. They had to be antique items from a long time ago. Hey Garen, wanna visit Jade Ripple Lake with us this weekend? A few students gathered on the rooftop of one of the school buildings. They were hanging out and chatting near the railing, overlooking the school. The morning sunlight was cool and pale, softly shining on their bodies without much warmth. Garen was there as well, leaning against the railing. Calador and two youngsters he had just met were with him. Their names were Jake Reese and Fane. There were also three other girls, A.I. Faye and two of Fane's friends. The seven of them had just gotten to know each other this week. Jade Ripple Lake. Where is that? Garen asked Calador. It's near the paper mill in the suburbs. We've only been there once. There were tons of swans at the lake, along with many other types of birds. And. You know. With a sinister smirk on his face, Calador made an eye gesture at the girls who were merrily chatting behind them, the point is, it's a desolate wildland. Jake added from the side. This boy looked quite mature with his short red hair and tan skin. He looked like a candid fellow, but in truth, he had tricked and hurt a lot of girls' feelings with his honest appearance. Easier to get things done. Garen added, and the three of them laughed maliciously. Calador winked at Fane. It will be every man for himself, so don't blame me. There will be more girls this time, but Fane and the two girls who are friends with him are going as well, Garen shook his head. He had met Fane's friend some time ago. Fane was from a wealthy family and the girls he brought were very pretty. However, last time they were together those girls all hung out solely among themselves, completely segregated from the impoverished students. They didn't bother talking to them even after Fane introduced the groups to each other. If it's like the last time, then forget it. Garen replied, I don't have much spare money left anyway and don't want the trouble, you guys can go by yourselves. Garen had grown some muscle in the last few days, so he did not look sickly and skinny anymore. His body had become more muscular and manly. It's fine. I can pay for your share, no problem. Calador said as he slammed Garen's shoulder. Everyone traveling together is more fun. What's the point of sticking around by yourself? If we don't hang out often, we'll become distant. What's going on, you don't like the gang anymore? You're paying for me again. Last time was. Garen was speechless. Forget about all that, so do we have a deal. We'll meet at the academy's front gate at 9am, you guys good with that? 
Of course. I'm fine with that. The others had all agreed, and Garen was forced into an accord by Kalidor. Even though he really didn't want to go, he couldn't resist in the face of Kalidor's overwhelming enthusiasm. He was under the impression that if he didn't go, Kalidor would break up their friendship. After settling on the time, they asked the girls to come, but Fane's friends had things to do and declined the invitation. Only A.I. Fay stood on the rooftop, with her right hand holding down her mini skirt. The place she was standing on was very windy, making the hemline of her skirt flutter in the wind. A.I. Fay held her skirt with an uneasy expression, afraid of a wardrobe malfunction. Even though she was wearing leggings, an upskirt still was one of a girl's most feared embarrassments. Hearing the invitation to Jade Ripple Lake, A.I. Fay looked to Garen first. Ever since the goat milk event, the two had been feeling like they had a lot in common. Garen, are you going too? She asked. Well. Fane promised that if I go, he'd let me see his family's jewelry collection. You know, it's my hobby now. A.I. Fay nodded and slightly furrowed her brows. In the last few days, she had been paying some attention to Garen. She thought that this young man was different from the others. He was a lot more mature and prudent than the other boys, and his family was also financially similar to hers. Wouldn't that leave your sister alone at home? She's going to practice at the archery club. Apparently, she's about to join a competition. Her school performance might be lackluster but she sure is good at archery, Garen explained. He had to agree this time because he knew that Fane's family had an antique jewelry that could not be purchased elsewhere. It was very ancient, similar to the teacher's black and red pearl he had absorbed the energy from earlier. In order to enhance his abilities, he could not decline this invitation. The last enhancement to strength allowed him to reach rank 14 in the White Cloud Dojo's class. After researching ways to fill his potential meter, Garen found that this world was not as simple as he thought. Chapter 5 The Outing You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Jade Ripple Lake Clear Blue Waters, Lush Green Mountains, and Glistening Yellow Stones A few white birds slowly glided above the lake. A cool wind whistled through, making the surface of the azure lake ripple, blurring the reflection of the endless mountain range on the water. The boys walked along the stone-filled riverbed and soon found a great spot for a picnic. Then, they began taking out tools and food from their backpacks. Garen looked at the girls seated in the shade. Aside from the ones they already knew were coming, there was also a gorgeous surprise in the form of a girl named Felicity. This dazzling beauty's white dress fluttered in the wind, and her blonde hair was tied together and hung over her left shoulder. Her crystal clear skin was gleaming with a halo, and her eyes were filled with aloof loftiness, like the clearest sapphire in the world. Withdrawing his gaze from her, Garen looked at himself, Kalidor, Fane, and Jake. None of them knew how to dress up. Their attires were completely mismatched, comprising solely of various dull colors like beige, gray, white, and black. On top of that, the clothes they were wearing were cheap, making them look like a ragtag army of bandits. He had not felt this way before, but after comparing the boys to the girls on the other side, he could not help but acknowledge the significant difference. That girl is Felicity. Fane's friends invited her to come. She looks so elegant. Kalidor said in a low volume while stacking the firewood together. Tisk, TSK. I haven't seen anyone with an aura like that in the academy. Jake lowered his voice and added, Imagine if you could have a girlfriend like that. She's my cousin's friend, so I don't know her either. You guys should keep it down, Fane explained on the side. I didn't know my cousin would invite her, I told her to come with her other friend. He shrugged. Garen smiled and squatted down with them, fixing the messy firewood. Compared to the pure and spotless Felicity, the boys who were working with muddy firewoods were from a completely different world. Want to play poker? Kalidor leaned over and asked. 
the poker he mentioned was a game loved by children from poor families. The cards were made by folding paper and pinching holes on them. The rules were very similar to the game Garen knew on Earth. Garen, Jake, and Fane saw him pulling out some old poker cards and they got excited. Let's go, what do we use for steaks, said one of them. Let's use these roasted fish and kebabs. One per hand. The few kids sat on the ground in a circle and began playing atop a white rock. It wasn't long before they became heavily immersed in their game. Felicity stood in the shade, watching the boys playing poker in the middle of the muddy riverbed. Her sapphire eyes did not have any trace of discrimination, but they still put her on a level above everyone else. She was from a different social class compared to the students in this small city. Originally, she was just passing by, but after the invitation of her friends and classmates, she agreed to come out for some fresh air. A girl with short red hair came up to her and watched the boys together. Fane is my cousin, albeit a very distant one. The students here like to come out at night and set up a campfire to have a barbecue. Are you interested? I could introduce you to them. No thanks, that looks dirty. Felicity frowned. I'm just here to get some fresh air, it would be great if I could have some quiet time alone. Garen was playing poker with the guys and noticed their eyes unconsciously wandering off towards the girls. He thought it was funny, so very discreetly, he took an extra card when it was his turn. He glanced at them but they were oblivious. He repeated this a few times until he finally showed his hands. Sorry boys, I won. Wah. The others looked confused, their mouths agape. Garen smiled and carefully stacked the cards together. Seeing his friend's expressions, he thought of the old Garen in his memory. Before he traveled here, Garen used to get into arguments with his sister all the time. Furthermore, he would get knocked on the ground in just a few seconds every time, without any chance of retaliation. Ing Air was not as fragile as she looked. She was great at all sports, martial arts and archery. He had been bullied by Ing Air ever since their parents married. He was three years old at the time, and Ing Air was only two. However, Garen used to fail at everything, be it playing cards or anything else, because he doubted himself and didn't understand how to be flexible. And these failures continued to destroy his self-confidence, forming a downward spiral. Part of the reason why he decided to practice martial arts was because he couldn't best his sister in fights. Going back in his memory, he remembered he had cried once after Ing Air had beaten him in middle school. Garen's smile convulsed. Beaten to tears by his own sister when he was already ten years old. This is a whole new level of shame. And he secretly wept in his room. No wonder the two had a bad relationship. Garen was suddenly regretful of possessing this body. Shoo. The black dot feathered arrow launched from the bow accurately pinned itself on the edge of the bullseye. Ing Air was wearing a white archery robe. She slowly lowered the bow and sighed. My form is still not steady enough. You are already doing quite well from this distance, said the girl with blue hair standing next to her. If you can keep this up, the next vice president of our archery club will be you. Thank you, senior sister. Ing Air answered her with respect. Each of Xingying Academy's student organizations worked differently. Students from higher grades were allowed to partake in the academy's administrative positions, and they were not only the head of student organizations, but also in charge of managerial decisions within the academy. The girl in blue hair nodded. Also, about the fight last time, I've taken care of it. You should try not to let that happen again. At least, don't hurt people that badly, since it's hard to keep these things under control. Thank you so much, President. I'll try to keep it down. Ing Air apologized again, she knew that the president had great expectations and constantly took care of her. Ing Air was someone who could be persuaded by reason but not cowed by force. She had always felt guilty towards the president. She knew that if it weren't for all her fights with the other students, she would have already been promoted to vice president of the archery club by now. 
but the fight last time was because. The blue dot haired girl heard her response, nodded, and left to check on the other members. Ing Air continued to practice on her own. After a few minutes, a brunette girl came by and whispered something to her. Ing Air's face turned red. It doesn't matter how useless he is, he's still my brother. Whoever dares touch him is disrespecting me as well. Let's go. She put down her longbow and fiercely ran out of the archery dojo still wearing her white robe. The tomboys that were inside all followed her out, almost as if she were the dawn of an all-dot girls mafia. The president of the archery club saw this and shook her head helplessly. How many times has it been? I wonder if she has a brother complex. Every time someone mentions him. Ling, go watch her and don't let her get into trouble. She's our best hope for the competition that's coming up. Don't let her beat them up too bad or she might get disqualified. A short girl with red hair next to her nodded and jogged out without saying a word. Other members of the club were well used to this and thus went back to practicing. A few of them shook their heads and smiled. While obedient and cute in front of her seniors, she was a violent and terrorizing figure to strangers. Ing Air's temperament was well dot known among senior members of the club. The sky was clear and blue, with only a few plumes of cloud hanging on the edge of the horizon. Garin sat on a white rock with a handful of kebabs turning in his hands. The delicious smell of spice permeated over the fire. Some oily bubbles flopped on the golden and crispy surface of the roasted meat. He laid the kebabs on the barbecue racks and looked at the others. They were all busy sprinkling spices over their kebabs. He stood up and strolled towards the lake, then squatted down and scooped a handful of water. He smeared the water on his face to wash off the soot from the fire. As the cold lake water splashed on his face, his spirit lifted. Garin looked behind them, but the girls had wandered far off. They were gathered far away on the riverbed, and were putting down some snacks and beverages over a white picnic blanket. He exhaled deeply. So many days have passed in the blink of an eye. He glimpsed at the attribute pain at the bottom of his vision. Agility and vitality were increased by 0.01 each, but this was the result of his own exercising, since his potential meter was stuck at 89%. Only 11% short. I'll see if Fane's jewelry is effective. If not, then I must find another way. Jewelry with potential is too rare. I wonder what kind of background the black pearl the etiquette teacher brought, to be able to fill the potential meter by a whole 100%. As the cold wind howled, Garin felt the chilliness on his back. He decided to go back near the bonfire. Far ahead on the river bank is the paper mill, where my uncle works. Do you guys want to go visit? Calador pointed to the river by the lake. What's so interesting about paper mills? Fane was saying something when suddenly, a scream came from afar and lingered in the air. The girls seemed to have encountered something horrific. The boys looked over to where the girls were supposed to be having their picnic. Two of them were on the ground, slowly backing away from something. One had already run off, too scared to get close to whatever was there. Felicity was one of the girls who fell. Something must have happened, let's go. Garin was the first to react, but the others followed a second later, throwing their kebabs away as they rushed over. Among the pebbles of the yellow riverbed, a black and purple snake held its head high, spitting its forked tongue. Two girls lay on the ground, backing away in complete terror, one of them with a bloodstained bite wound on her calf. Chapter 6 the establishment of a subject you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation, it's a panaja snake, a highly toxic amphibious snake. We need to get the poison out right away. Garin instantly reacted and quickly recognized this type of snake. He had not been just blindly living his new life all this time he had already memorized most of this world's common knowledge. On top of that, the young Garin who grew up in the countryside had previously dealt with this type of snake before. 
As soon as he finished talking, he kicked a cobblestone. Bang! The stone landed beside the black snake. The snake immediately slithered into the stream out of fear, leaving behind only a trail of ripples as it quickly disappeared. How do I detoxify the venom? sobbed Fane's cousin Enna, the only girl who had not been bitten. Rinse it with water, find some poplar leaves, then chew them to bits and apply them to the bites. Garin yelled. During this critical time, all the students were overwhelmed. This clearly contrasted the calmness Garin had as a mental adult. He directed the boys to acquire poplar leaves and asked the girls to help clean the bite wounds and squeeze out the venomous snake's blood. Everything was dealt with rather quickly. The girls who were bitten seemed distraught, but they held it in. Felicity stood up from the ground, groomed her messy hair, and adjusted her skirt. Looking at the well-composed Garin, she was a little surprised. I will remember how you helped out my friend today, she calmly said as she helped stabilize her friend with her arms. It's not a big deal. Garin shrugged. With his mental age that was a few decades old, he naturally didn't mind. Of course, if you really want to show your appreciation, I appreciate antique jewelry. If you have any, I would love to borrow and admire them. His gaze was softly placed on Felicity's white neck, where a dark blue, almost black leather cord hung. Just as he was getting closer, the potential meter appeared in his lower field of vision. The meter jumped by another two units, from 89% to 92%. He was certain that Felicity had a jewel of potential. This jewelry could be superior in quality compared to the black pearls. Jewelry. Felicity softly frowned. Fane, who was on the other side, came over to explain, Garin really likes jewelry from ancient times. Originally, he didn't want to come, but I promised him that I would show him the jewelry my family passed down. If I didn't make this promise, then this guy here would have definitely not shown up. Do you want to be a jewelry appraiser or something? Felicity asked. She thought about it for a second, then reached behind her neck with her two hands and unbuckled the dark leather cord. Only now was everyone able to see the pendant attached to the cord. It was a diamond dot shaped blue crystal the size of a fingernail. Surprisingly, inside the crystal was a tiny silver halo. This was an antique I bargained for a while ago. This is what you're interested in, right? Felicity handed the crystal to Garin. Garin took the crystal and examined it. It did not appear to be very valuable other than the fact that it looked very antique. It's very pretty. The moment his hand touched the crystal, however, he felt a breath of burning heat surging out of the crystal and into his fingers. The potential meter in his peripheral vision was skyrocketing. 92%.98%.103%.132%.177%.181% The potential meter gradually started to slow before stopping at 181%. Looking at the crystal in his hand, Garin felt as if something within the crystal had gradually disappeared despite the lack of any physical change. Working hard to suppress the exhilaration, he carefully handed the crystal back. This is a really nice crystal. If possible, can I hear the backstory of this piece of jewelry? Felicity took the crystal, paused in surprise, and asked, you know what it is. Know what? Does this thing have some sort of story? Those who finally finished tending the snake wounds were beginning to relax. When she saw that the two people were talking among themselves, the red dot haired girl suddenly felt intrigued. She walked over and joined the conversation. It has a little bit of a story. Felicity nodded. The crystal's name is the Halo of Tragedy. Legend has it that those who wear this pendant will run into all kinds of misfortune and eventually die an unnatural death but I do not believe in these superstitions. However, I am very interested in these types of things, so I paid a lot of money to buy it. I've been wearing it ever since, but there are many forgeries of this halo of tragedy, and I am not even certain that the one I have is real. Garin nodded his head. Behind this crystal was actually such a widely spread background story. 
the two jewels of potential he had absorbed before also had tales of superstition behind them. This added another conjecture to his theory. Only jewelry with supernatural backgrounds would have potential. You sure have a lot of courage. What if the rumors are true? All the previous owners have died of unnatural causes, so is it real or fake? Two girls, revitalized from their wounds, crowded Felicity to ask more about the crystal. Garen, having consumed the potential, walked to the stream alone and pretended to wash his hands and face. I have already tested my strength the last time I did this and there really was a huge change. I wonder what kind of element I will receive today. In his vision, the four attribute bars rose. Physical attributes are my weakness, but fitness, strength, and agility can easily be improved with training. Intelligence, however. I'm not sure how much it can affect me. Pausing for a moment, he placed his gaze on the strength, intelligence, and fitness bars. I think that spreading out my potential points wouldn't yield great results, it would just make me into an above average but normal person. To really create an advantage, I must specialize. Since I've already added points to strength, adding to it again is one way to go. But. If only I could split the points and add them. As soon as he had that thought, the flow of essence that was twirling inside his brain split into three different segments and entered into each of the three elements. Strength, agility, and intelligence. Garen felt his body rattle as a strange numbness crazily descended from his head down to his back. After a few seconds, his body returned to normal. He felt like his upper body increased in strength and toughness. His mind also instantly became a bit clearer. Suddenly, he could think through and answer questions from his academic studies that had eluded him before. He took some time to adjust, then peeked at the meters that displayed the different attributes. Strength. 0.44, Agility. 0.23, Fitness. 0.31, Intelligence. 0.36, Potential. 81%. Strength increased by 0.03, Fitness by 0.03, and Intelligence by 0.04. They increased the points evenly. Garen paused. What's the use of intelligence though, he wondered as he examined the condition of his body. The Shenyang Nobles Academy used a standard nobles curriculum. In other words, they specialized in developing geniuses. As long as the student had one particularly strong area, they could be accepted into the academy even if their other areas were weak. However, Garen had no plans to attend Shenyang Nobles Academy. That was a path paved out for the children of power, who had no worries about food or clothing. Ordinary students tended to improve their overall performances and apply to prominent schools. To do so, the student had to be proficient in every element. Nighttime A little community on the south side of Huashan City, inside a red dot-roofed condo. Garen sat in front of a desk in his room, his purple hair and burgundy eyes glowing dimly as he used the faint yellow lamp light to read the book in front of him. The thin pieces of paper gently stuck onto his fingertips before turning and falling down again, soft and smooth. The book placed before him was a social history book. Dong. 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 A dull clock bell faintly tolled outside the window. Garen glanced outside. The building across from him was pitch black without a single ray of light. Is it already midnight? Good timing. I finally just finished using the effects the potential had on my intelligence. A clicking noise came from his sister's neighboring room. It was the sound of her flicking off her light. Garen stood up and laid down on his bed. His two hands supported his head. My general memory abilities improved by a small amount. The time I need in order to logically assess a problem also decreased. But most importantly, my mental math speed has been greatly enhanced. I even reluctantly learned some fundamental knowledge in regards to my least favorite subject, social history. If we calculate based on the rules of this game system, I am currently only at the entry level for social history. 
there should still be three more stages. Intermediate, advanced, and formal disciple. As soon as he had these thoughts, the bottom of his peripheral vision flashed and a new symbol appeared flashing above the five attributes. Garin froze. Ah, sh asterisk t, even this is allowed. He jumped out of his bed and stared at the newly formed symbol without a word. A light red symbol could clearly be seen in the bottom of his peripheral vision. Mastery level of skill, social history. Elementary. Conditions required to meet goal. Intelligence level exceeds 0.34, Garen repeatedly read this line of writing in awe for a full 10 minutes before he was certain that these new symbols were real. Similar to the other elements, it had a tiny symbol that could easily be missed if one was not paying enough attention. When he was not paying attention, these red symbols faded into a half-dot translucent status and did not obstruct his vision at all. Additionally, after these new symbols appeared, Garen recalled information from the social history class. He could easily remember up to 70% of the content as if it was deeply imprinted in his brain. I only started studying this course today, yet I have almost achieved almost total recall of all its contents. I guess that this is the advantage of adding points to intelligence. With the differences in subject difficulty, I suppose the intelligence requirements also differ. The necessary intelligence levels also change based on the extent of subject comprehension. Garin had no desire to sleep after that. He turned and started to gather textbooks for all the subjects. He read through every single book, one after another. Half an hour later. The condition required to establish a subject is to thoroughly finish reading a textbook. The previous Garin used one year to grasp a single subject, the study of ancient Chinese history. It's also only at the elementary level. Sighing deeply, Garin was speechless at his former self. He watched the symbols in his peripheral vision. Main subjects. Math. Not yet established, ancient history. Elementary, social history. Elementary, foreign language. Not yet established, physics. Not yet established. Math, ancient history, social history, foreign language, and physics were all mandatory subjects required by the school, with no exceptions. Throughout the entire country, students were required to pass these classes in order to graduate. Garin did some calculation and comparison of his skills to his test scores. In the old days, for every ancient history test, Garin bounced between a score of 60 and 70 out of 100. This means that entry level is within this range. If there are no unexpected events, then my social history should also score between 60 and 70. With these kinds of marks, I would place in the bottom 10 in my class. For the prominent universities, according to the average Xingying annual scores, I need to place the in the top 100 to be admitted to a renowned university. To place within the top 100 in a school with a total of 1,000 students per year should not be too hard. He suddenly remembered how Garin's parents worked overtime every day and only took one-day weekends in order to provide tuition for him and his sister. They placed all their hope on the two siblings. To guarantee a ranking in the top 100, my average score for my classes needs to be between 70 to 80. At this rate, if I can reach an average level of intermediate in all my mandatory courses, I can steadily gain entrance to a university. However, even if I work hard and improve, others will do the same. If the questions the students get on exams are relatively easy, then we must compete based on who is more meticulous. Garin slowly and carefully analyzed all these issues, if I were able to absorb more potential from the heirloom black crystal at Fane's place. If only I absorbed a bit more then, I would have been able to increase my attribute points again. He felt somewhat regretful when he remembered what happened at Jade Ripple Lake. Chapter 7 The Bronze Cross You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Garen stopped overthinking and began sorting things out. He took off his clothes and blew out the oil lamp. He then went onto the bed and covered himself with a blanket. 
In the darkness, he calmed down and fell asleep. Dong! Dong! The morning bell kept ringing. Bright sunlight was shining over the white bed. Garen was sleeping face up and he opened his eyes slowly. Still a bit dizzy, he took a deep breath and looked outside the window. He then slowly removed the blanket and got off the bed. The peeling light red paint on the walls and floors revealed the pale dot yellow colored lumber underneath. A silver framed painting of a wheat field was crookedly hanging on the wall. The window on the right was half dot open, and the chilling wind whistled non stop through it. Ka da ta ka da ta. Amplified by the wooden floors, Garin could acutely hear an air's footsteps from the living room. He tried to clear his head by rubbing his temples several times. Garin grabbed the loose part of his oversized gray dot white long sleeved pajamas, but there was not much he could do about the bagginess. I haven't thought too much about it, but why am I still wearing my mother's pajamas? It just doesn't feel right. Garin said as he walked towards the window and quietly closed it. Below the right side of the window was a street in the district. Several people wearing thick coats were walking by, and one of them even had a boater hat and scarf on him. There was an empty ground behind the buildings on the left side with more cars parked in it than usual. Some of the cars were black, others were white, and the headlights of these antique cars were similar to the eyes of a goldfish. Cars like those look nice, but they have to be cooled down every 40 miles. Garin said as he shook his head. He sniffed several times and he could smell the mixed fragrance of fried egg and warm milk. Garin left the window, opened the door of the bedroom and walked into the living room. On the right side of the room, he saw the yellow dot white window curtains billowing in the air due to the strong wind coming from outside. On the left side, Garin could see his sister, Ing Air, carefully flipping fried eggs in the kitchen. She had changed into a short one piece with a black apron on her waist. Garin could see the white lace on the edge of her skirt and the thick tights underneath, Ing Air also wore a dark purple shawl on her back. Her burgundy pupils intently stared at the fried eggs being cooked in the pan. Just woke up. Go brush your teeth. Breakfast will be ready soon. I bought some fresh white bread and warm milk. Making the fried eggs right now, Ing Air said as she looked at Garin. They are not coming back. Garin wiped his oily face with his hands and walked towards the washroom. He turned the tap on in front of a mirror. Splash! Water rushed out of the tap. Garin grabbed his red towel and soaked it in the water. He then wrung the towel and pressed it on his face. I told you before, right? They are on a business trip, Ing Air answered. Do you know where? Garin asked. I think they are going to Delon City. It would take three days for them to get there by the train. Plus the time they will spend on their way back. Ing Air answered while turning the stove off. She put the fried eggs on a plate and brought them to the table. They won't be back until next week. It's you and me again this weekend. Ing Air sat down, putting the bread, milk and fried eggs on the table. Let's eat, she said. After rinsing his mouth, Garin put his wooden toothbrush back into the glass and then turned back and left the washroom. Ing Air sat across from him. The rectangular table was made of redwood, and they both had a silver dot-colored metal plate in front of them. There was a triangle dot-shaped piece of bread in each plate, and there were some tiny characters marked on them. Garin grabbed the silverware and cut off a small piece of the bread. It tasted a bit hard and dry, but there was a hint of sweetness. It's Saturday. You got any plans for today? Ing Air drank some milk and asked. Yeah. I want to go to the new antique store in the southern part of the city. It opened on the old Pennington Street, Garin said while eating the fried egg. It's pretty far from here. We are on Blue Tree Street and need to pass through downtown. Then, we need to walk another half an hour. It's like walking from one side of the town to the other. Why are you interested in the new antique store? Ing Air was confused. If it's not important, can you go to the fruit market with me? 
I also want to check out the pet shops on a street beside the market. You can carry the bags for me, In Air said as she took a subtle glance at Garen, she seemed to be looking forward to spending time with him. I want some white pears, my favorite fruit, she added. White pears. Garen stopped for a second, the old Garen used to love white pears too. Sorry, I really need to check out the new antique shop. It's important, Garen said. Fine. Ing Air nodded and stopped talking. She decided to focus on the food. It's fall now, make sure you wear enough clothes. Don't catch a cold, Garen reminded as he put the rest of the food into his mouth. He gulped it down with a few sips of milk. I'm leaving. Garen stood up and went back to the bedroom to change. Ing Air listlessly sat by the table as she watched him leave. She kept stabbing the bread pieces in her plate with the fork. Garen changed from his pajamas to a thick black coat and dark blue pants with a black and white scarf around his neck. He looked like a handsome teenager and was no longer thin and weak. However, his gaze looked deep, and his eyes looked like two pure gems with a sparkle of burgundy in the middle. Now, he looked totally different and more mature with the changes to his eyes. When will you be back? How long do you plan to stay in the shop? Ing Air raised her head up and asked. I will be back before dinner. I have to go now, Garen said as he tidied his scarf. He walked to the door and put on his black leather boots. He opened the door, walked out and saw that his neighbor's door was open. A middle-aged man with glasses turned back and looked at him for a second, but did not say anything. The man was holding a black bag in his hand and closed his door without greeting Garen. Garen knew this neighbor, the tenant, Boris, was the middle-aged man Garen had just met. He never saw the man's wife, but he knew that the man lived with a seven or eight years old boy. Garen barely talked to them and they never greeted him if they saw him around. Garen had only talked to them once since his family had moved here. He introduced himself and greeted them, but they did not have any further conversation. Garen's family was irked by how impolite the man and his son were. Garen carefully closed the metal door, then he rubbed his hands together for warmth. He walked down the stairs and followed the path towards the left, entering a grey road lit by black street lights. Outside the district, the streets were between yellow buildings and had black railings protecting pedestrians on the sides. An antique car was driving along the road, and Garen could see the white smoke coming out of the exhaust. There was an ox cart full of fruits following behind the car, and the coachman whipped the ox while yelling from time to time. While glancing at the yellow buildings beside him, Garen walked by the railings, each of these buildings was around seven floors tall and some had their windows open. Others closed their windows tight and put barbed wire on them. The edges of the buildings were round rather than sharp right angles. A chilling autumn wind blew through Garen's hair. He lowered his head and felt his skin numbed by the cold. There were young trees planted next to the railings, however, they were bereft of leaves. As such, Garen could only see the dark, bold branches. After walking for about twenty minutes, he started to see more people and cars on the street. He walked past a bronze sign labeled Garden Street. Garen turned left at a crossroads, and instead of yellow, the buildings became gray and white with complex designs. These buildings looked luxurious, and there were tall round poles around them. There were also some beautiful sculptures by the buildings, and the black street lamps were decorated with white ornaments on top. The sidewalk was almost empty. There was a woman wearing a thick white dress walking her dog, and there were also two old men holding canes sitting on a black metal bench talking in hushed voices. Garen tightened his scarf and looked over the building on his left. Garen's uncle lived on the fifth floor of that building, this uncle of his was the one who helped him and Ing Air get into the Shenyang Nobles Academy. Garen's uncle started his business from nothing and worked very hard to build up his reputation. He was one of the richest merchants in Huishan City, and he treated Garen very well. However, he did not care about girls, so he barely talked to Ing Air. I should visit my uncle on my way back. 
Garen thought as he walked faster towards the end of the street. He passed a bronze road sign standing beside the sidewalk that read Pennington Street. There was a small store at the corner by the end of the street. The arched door of the shop was wide open, and there was yellow light coming out of it. A bespectacled old man was sitting by the yellow shelves, carefully looking at the object in his hand with a magnifier. Garen glanced at the top right corner, towards a triangle sign hanging on the white wall. It read, Dolphin Antiques. Garen walked into the shop and looked around the place. There were more than ten tables in the shop, and there were red fabrics strewn all over the tables and walls, but he was the only customer. Many strange items were put on the tables. After entering the shop, Garen stepped on the dark yellow floor and was startled by the person to his right. He looked over and saw an incomplete body sculpture of a kid with curly hair, it only had the head and the shoulders. There was a cuboid stone pole supporting the sculpture from below. What do you need? asked the old man, who put down his magnifier when he saw Garen enter. The old man's skin was gray and yellow, while his wrinkled face was full of black freckles. Let me see. Garen panicked for a second, trying to think of a reason for being there. Don't mind me, I am just looking around, he answered after calming down. Chapter 8 Special Ability Enhancements You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation The old man brushed his fingers through his sparse hair. Look around by yourself. Items on the left side of my shop are personally acquired from the countryside. On the right are heirlooms that have been passed down for generations. He bowed his head and started to examine the tiny object in his hand again. The old man wore white gloves and held a soft gold pocket dot watch. The back of the watch was open and he seemed to be studying the gears and mechanics of the watch itself. Garen first glanced around the entire shop and then began to browse in detail from left to right. A long rectangular oil painting hung on the far left wall and depicted a white castle under siege. There were a handful of armored warriors who were pushing towards the castle bearing a red banner. The catapults were constantly flinging giant rocks as oil spilled down the castle walls. Bloody corpses were everywhere. Below the oil painting was a circular dark gold metal sheet. It was half a meter wide and a smiling human face bulged out in the center. What is this? Garen touched the metal sheet. The material was hard and the surface had a rough texture similar to copper paper. The old man standing under the bookshelf looked up. This is the totem of the sun god owned by the Crimson tribe from 300 years ago. It's a very valuable object. Every time the tribe plundered new gold, the wizard of the tribe would paint the metal disc with molten gold. Other than the human face in the middle, everywhere else has been painted over countless times with gold and brass. If you are interested, I can sell it to you for cheap at $35,000. The old man took off his glasses and rubbed the lenses with a soft cloth as he continued, not a lot of people know the value of these objects anymore. A few decades ago, when antiques were the trend, I could have sold that for hundreds of thousands. Totem of the Sun God The corner of Garen's lips twitched. He knew without looking that this was fake. Not only did the lack of response from his special ability signal this, there was also the fact that if the totem really was worth that much and was really made out of gold, then there was no way it would be displayed here waiting to be sold. If it was actually a huge piece of gold-plated metal, any jeweler would be willing to buy it for $100,000. Although the shop owner even gave him a deal for $35,000. The total amount of cash he had on hand was only $20. On his left, he saw a tall redwood table. On top was a burgundy emblem, a transparent wine bottle, and a silver cup. Garin gently touched each of the three items. When he touched the burgundy emblem, the potential meter at the bottom of his vision jumped. Hmm. There's something up with this. He quietly turned his body until his back was facing the old man. The skin on his face tensed. He picked up the burgundy emblem and inspected it carefully. 
the emblem was in the shape of a cross. The cross was burgundy with gold laurels wrapped around its edges. Garin found that in the dead center of the cross, there was a tiny patch of black paint the size and shape of a fingernail with the letter P carved on it. He could feel the powerful concentrated cold chi inside the emblem. Compared to the black pearl and Felicity's halo of tragedy, this one felt many times more powerful. For some reason, however, he could not entirely absorb this energy from the emblem. There was only a thin thread of energy between the emblem and him, with potential being slowly squeezed out like toothpaste. Before, I could easily and instantly absorb all the potential from the objects I found. How come this time it's going so slowly? At this rate, if I want to fully consume this energy, I would have to stay here for days. A trace of excitement and disbelief flashed across Garin's eyes. That $6,000, the bespectacled old man said in a deadpan voice while standing to Garin's right side. $6,000. Garin frowned. The old man was wearing all black. Looking at the emblem, he said in a low tone, I acquired this bronze cross emblem from a veteran family. You sure have good eyes for picking this one out. Out of all the stuff I acquired, this emblem is the most exquisite. It came from the Republic of Mendia over 150 years ago. At that time, the Republic of Mendia was so powerful that all other countries lived in fear of it. They were able to establish hundreds of colonies throughout the world and half of the land now occupied by the Yalu Confederation was also colonized by them. This emblem was one of the products left from that period of time. I believe it was a reward given to a level 2 military commander. I'll look around a bit more. I'm not in a rush. Garin wanted to suppress his desire to purchase it. He knew that if he could absorb all the potential out of the emblem, then he would be able to add more than two points to his abilities. Unfortunately, he had no money. The weekly allowance he received was only $20. The difference between that amount and $6,000 was astronomical. The old man noticed how reluctant Garin was about giving it up. I had a soldier coming in last time who wanted to buy it off me, but he didn't bring enough cash. If you really want it kid, take this opportunity and get it before he comes back. Garin's face twitched. I'll look at some other stuff first that, all right, up to you. The old man smiled like a blooming chrysanthemum. Garin peeked at the old man. This guy. He obviously noticed that I wanted to buy it and so made up a story to push me over the edge. However, I should be careful. Perhaps there really is someone who has their eye on this. But no rush, if I'm lucky, I can find something else in this shop and absorb potential from it as well. He became more determined and began to browse through everything from the tables to walls. Very soon, he had touched every single item in the shop. Sadly, the remaining items were regular objects and only the emblem had potential. After a while, he again returned to the round table and picked up the cross dot shaped burgundy emblem. He examined it for more than half an hour. I don't have enough money on me at the moment. Do you think you can reserve it for me for now? I will return to buy it later. Garin raised his head and looked in the old man's direction. The old man had long since returned to the bookshelf. He was wiping the dust off his antiques with a soft white cloth. When he heard Garin's request, he turned his head with a grin. Of course I can. However, I cannot reserve it for long. The story I told you may seem like a sales tactic, but someone really does want to buy it. There are only three weeks left until he comes back. Three weeks. Garin frowned. All right. I will try my best to get the money. What's the lowest price you can give me? Since you are a student, I will discount the price and only ask for $5,000. That is the lowest and final offer, the old man said as he adjusted his glasses. I will not bargain with you now, but we will talk about it later. Garin didn't say anything more. He gave the emblem a final glance and placed it back on the table. Then, he walked before the old man. My name is Garin. May I ask what your name is? Call me Old Man Gregor. 
what do you want to ask? I warn you though, I don't answer sensitive questions for free. I wanted to ask where you purchased this emblem from. Garen asked with a frown. The old man recollected his memories, I can tell you the answer, but. He extended his arm with a smile. Garen watched speechlessly as the old man opened his hand. He took out a $10 bill and put it in the skinny chicken dot like hand. Cheap, the old man muttered as he took the money. I got it from an old abandoned castle in a town more than 60 miles away from Huishan City. The original owner of the castle was a viscount, but his successive generations were feeble. Nowadays, the highest title in the family is knight. Nobody has been able to maintain the castle for years. As a result, everything in the castle has been bought and sold, it's practically empty now. If the castle was in a better condition and a better location, it would have been bought off a long time ago. The castle's name. I think it was called Silver Silk Castle. Silver Silk Castle. Can you draw me a detailed map of how to get there? The old man again extended his open palm with a grin on his face. What the f? Garin cursed uncontrollably. He took another $10 bill out of his pocket and stuffed it into the old man's palm. Can you please hurry? Of course. The old man accepted the bill and quickly took out a thin yellow paper from a drawer. He picked up an ink dot soaked quill and drew out a simple map. Garin scanned the map after receiving it, thanks for taking the time. Please wait for me. Before the old man could respond, Garin rolled up the paper and marched out of the antique shop. After walking on the sidewalk for a while, he reached out and touched his empty pocket. He wanted to cry, but he had no tears. Even if I don't buy the emblem and only travel to the castle, it would still cost me $50 to $60. This means I need to save my allowance from this week and next week. As he walked, his brain looked for ways he could get his hands on $5,000. He had a faint feeling that the emblem was covered by something, causing him to be unable to truly get in contact with it and absorb all of its potential. If he wanted all the potential, he would have to scrape off whatever was covering it and reveal the actual object. The issue was that he could not afford it and therefore could not damage it by scraping. Looking at the light red numbers in his lower field of view, the potential meter had broken through to 101%. A cold wave of air lingered around his brain. Now, he could add points to any attribute at any time. There is no rush. I stood there for so long, yet I absorbed such little potential. If I want to absorb substantial potential from the emblem, I would need to stand there for days. There is no way old man Gregor would allow that. Garen recalculated the estimated total potential from the emblem and felt a flame burning in his chest when he realized that there should be at least five points. I can try to try to get money and come here every day to absorb its potential. Small portions will eventually add up. There is no way I can't finish consuming its potential. He silently decided. Walking to the entrance of Pennington Street again, Garen raised his head and looked over at his uncle's house. Coincidentally, the arched window was wide open. A chubby middle dot aged man was standing beside the window and was looking down. Garen is that you? The man had a very common face with very thick black eyebrows and gave off a tough vibe. I haven't seen you in so long. Hurry, come up. Garen didn't expect to actually see his uncle. He merely nodded, walked around the stone column and entered the half-dot-open wooden corridor entrance. The corridor led to a spacious lounge. The floor was covered with black carpet and a white stone statue of an angel was placed in the center. The wings of the angel were spread wide, as if ready to fly. Garen entered from the left side stairs, jogged past a few people, and quickly reached a red metal door on the left side of the fifth floor. Dong, dong, dong. He reached out to open the door. Immediately, the door creaked open. Uncle Tyr was standing in front of the door wearing a white dress shirt and black dress pants. Hurry in. The fireplace is lit. Okay. 
Garen passed the door, changed into slippers, and walked into the room with his uncle. The room was covered with light yellow wallpaper and there were oil paintings after oil paintings on the walls. Most of the paintings were not of Uncle Tyr, but were of his wife, Windsor. After a few minutes, Garen stood by the window, listening to his uncle talk about recent local news with a bearded guest. In the middle of their heated conversation, Uncle Tyr suddenly fixed his gaze onto Garen. Garen, if you want to make a difference in the future, you must remember one thing. Read lots, explore lots, and think lots. The fundamental principle is to speak less, but act more. Uncle Tyr removed his cigar and gently flicked it into the ashtray. You are in high school now, you will be going to university in the future, and then you will start your career. Whether it's about your academic career or your professional career, it's good to remember this piece of advice. Also, hang out with Lomberth and Philia more often. You are all around the same age and will be cousins for life. These days, they are always playing some chess war game. They don't do useful stuff anymore. You should talk some sense into them. Uncle Tyr had been managing his own business for a long time. There were very complex relationships between the legal and illegal means. Even though he appeared to be an ordinary businessman, he actually had a lot of interests in other aspects and even had a gun permit. Garen looked down and nodded continuously. He knew that even though his uncle looked very kind, in his bones he was someone stubborn and paranoid. He hated others disagreeing with his plans since he had a very strong sense of individualism. The bearded man laughed as well. This is your nephew. Nowadays, young people have such valuable resources. Thinking back to our days, we did not grow up in such a nice environment. Exactly, the environment is so good they have forgotten how to treasure it, Uncle Tyr laughed helplessly and returned to discussing business news with the bearded guest. Garen stood to the side and listened to the two adults having their discussion. Internally, he was looking for ways to acquire that $5,000. Usually when he visited his uncle, he would receive allowances ranging from a high of a few hundred dollars to a low of $80 to $90. The distance to $5,000 was still too far. Garen had no plans to ask for money from his uncle anyways. If he did, this would be his first time asking and he might need his uncle's help for a second or third time after today. While it might be possible the for Garen to get some money from his uncle the first time, if Garen did this multiple times then his uncle would stop accommodating him regardless how much his uncle liked him. I have to find a way myself. Garen thought of the dojo. If I can successfully gain entrance to White Cloud Dojo, then every month I can get a small monetary reward. Usually it's $2,000. This is one source of income. Additionally, the school offers lots of scholarships for a total of 10 grand. There are two more months till the end of the semester, but there is no way I can get the scholarship with my current level of learning unless I can get ability enhancements. Other than for ancient civilization and history, I have yet to achieve the minimum level of the intelligence requirement. I can only memorize and understand everything after achieving this minimal requirement. Otherwise, I have to follow the normal rules and slowly study. Suddenly, a thought flashed across Garen's brain, there are archery and swordsmanship competitions. Out of the two, Ing Air will participate in one. Top three are awarded and even the third place wins $10,000, but I'm not sure how good Garen is at archery and swordsmanship. As soon as he thought of this question, he saw that the symbols were slowly changing at the bottom of his vision. Soon, it changed into three elements. Swordsmanship, archery, and basic boxing. Swordsmanship. Elementary. Archery. Elementary. Basic boxing. Elementary. I wonder if I can add points to these abilities. Garen speculated. He tried to concentrate on the swordsmanship element. Inside his brain, waves of air were pouncing around, waiting to spew forth. It's possible. He immediately stopped the flow of air, shifted his focus, and repressed the excitement he was feeling. Chapter 9 
Change your listening at novelfull.audio. Translator. Endless Fantasy Translation Editor. Endless Fantasy Translation Garen calmed down and stood there listening to the conversation between the two. It was almost noon and was getting brighter outside. Uncle Tyr finally stood up and saw the customer to the door. Uncle, I have to go now, Garen said while taking his scarf off the clothing stand. It's still very early. You can leave after lunch if you want, Tyr said, turning back to Garen. You rarely come to visit and Lomberth will be back shortly. You could have a chat with him, he continued. Maybe next time. Ing Air is waiting for me at home. Garen smiled. I promised her that I will be back for lunch, he added. Fine. Stay safe. Tyr chuckled. He patted Garen's head several times. I will, Garen said. Garen put on his shoes and was about to leave. Suddenly, some warm paper was shoved into his right palm. It was a stack of hundred dollar bills. Garen turned back and saw his smiling uncle. Take it. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's just some pocket money. Make sure you work hard in school, Tyr said. I will. Thank you, uncle. Goodbye. Garen smiled and bowed in gratefulness. Come and visit me more often whenever you are free, Tyr said. I will. Garen said goodbye and walked down the stairs. He went back to the first floor, where he saw a blonde boy wearing a tight white suit standing in the middle of the hall as a torrent of people walked past him. The boy was by a sculpture of a white angel. He saw Garen coming down the stairs and raised his eyebrows. Garen, get over here. The boy waved one of his hands while holding a white ball in the other. He dribbled it as he chatted with a black dot-haired girl who was next to him. Garen knew the boy. It was his cousin, Lomberth, the son of Tyr. He never liked Lomberth and hated his cousin's self. Centered and arrogant personality. Garen scowled and walked toward Lomberth, stopping when he stood about two meters away. What did my dad say to you? Lomberth leaned toward Garen and asked with a light tone. Nothing special. He asked me how I was doing recently. I have to go if you have nothing important to say, Garen answered softly. Why are you nervous? I am your elder. Could it be that my words are annoying you? Lomberth raised his eyebrows again and looked at the girl beside him. He felt like he was challenged by his younger cousin. I am leaving if you really have nothing else to say. It is lunchtime and Ing Air is waiting for me at home. Garen did not want to waste his time on Lomberth, so he walked toward the exit. He felt a bit speechless. Hey. I am your elder. Stop right there. Lomberth yelled angrily. Lomberth, do you really want to do this? You don't want to mess with me. Garen turned back and frowned as he raised his voice. Although the old Garen was weak, the new Garen would not back down from a situation like this. Ha! How dare you speak to me like that? I will teach you what respect is. Lomberth suddenly tried to slap Garen's face. He applied martial force to his palm. The strength of the slap was doubled with the use of his combat techniques. Lomberth, with a roar, motioned toward the left side of Garen's face. Pa Garen used his palm to block the attack, their palms colliding with each other in mid-air. Their strength level was similar, neither had an advantage during the exchange. Garen was a bit surprised that his playboy cousin knew any martial arts, but he himself had already reached the first level of professional martial artistry. He applied more force into his palm and angrily pushed it toward Lomberth. Unable to handle this counterattack, Lomberth took the hit and toppled sideways. He crashed into a middle dot aged man beside him and he flushed in embarrassment. Lomberth looked at his right hand, which was already swelling. It hand burned with a fiery pain and he could no longer raise it. Good. Garen. You are pretty good. Lomberth said and looked at the girl beside him again. You just wait. I'll make you pay for this, he yelled. 
Garen decided not to waste any more time. He knew that although Lomberth probably learned some martial arts growing up, that there was no way Lomberth could fight him. Garen had bitterly trained himself with incredible fervor. Even if Lomberth wanted to send someone else to beat Garen up, Tyr would never allow such a thing to happen. Save yourself some time. I can't imagine how disappointed my uncle will be if he sees you fight like this, Garen said as he exited the hallway through a small wooden door. From behind, he could still hear Lomberth crazily yelling curses at him. Garen returned to the district by the way he came. There were more people on the main road than before and he spent about half an hour getting back to Blue Tree Street. He entered the district, the fourth building on the right with a red roof was his home. There was an old gentleman walking down the stairs slowly with a cane in his hand. The stairs were narrow, so Garen stood to the side and waited for the gentleman to exit the building. The gentleman gave him a friendly smile, but did not say anything. He walked straight toward the parking lot on the right. Though the gentleman needed to support himself with the cane, he was walking carefully at his own pace. His crisp black suit gave him a solemn aura as he walked away. Garen withdrew his gaze and stepped onto the stairs. He went up the dim stairway and heard footsteps from above, and he peeked through a gap in the stairway. He saw Ingair walking upstairs slowly, it seemed she was carrying something very heavy. Ingair, he yelled. Garen. You're back. Come help me. I bought a bunch of white pears. Ingair heard the voice, put the groceries down onto the ground, and peeked through the stairway back at Garen. She was still wearing her black dress, the hem of her skirt barely covering her thighs. Coming. Garen started to move, but from his angle, he could see something white through the black tights under Ingair's skirt. He started to blush. You fool, stop acting like Lomberth. Ingair realized where he was staring at and started to blush as well. She immediately closed her legs tightly. You should have been careful in the first place. Garen tried to explain and ran toward her. He held the wooden yellow basket above his chest, holding about twenty fist dot sized white pears in it. Am I not being careful? Ing Air yelled with arms akimbo. Let's talk after we get back home. She realized she was being too loud and looked around to make sure that no one else was there. Garen shrugged his shoulders and stepped up the stairs again. Ing Air opened the door with her keys and they quickly entered their home. Garen put the basket down from his hands and ran away after changing his shoes. Banging Air slammed the door closed and raised her fists while still blushing. You are dead, Garen, she yelled and rushed toward Garen. She was faster than Garen, even after his hard training Ing Air started to chase Garen in the living room. After about ten seconds, Garen was tripped by Ing Air and fell down hard to the floor, she knows intermediate level martial arts. And it's even trained using some secret art. Garen thought while staring speechlessly at Ing Air. Even though he did not use any martial arts and wasn't being serious, he could still tell how strong his sister was just by watching her moves. Ing Air's martial arts were more about speed and dexterity, while the White Cloud Dojo's arts were more about bursts of strength. Ing Air had probably already reached the intermediate level. Different dojos had different focuses when developing their basic martial arts. Some focused more on strength, some focused more on bursts of damage, some on agility, and some had buffs to stamina, dodging skill, or innate resistances. Their basic martial arts had different names, but were just used for common fights, unlike secret arts. Secret training arts referred to special ways of exercising the body, and different dojos usually developed different versions. For example, the basic martial arts from White Cloud Dojo was not its secret arts, it was just a strength burst technique. Compared to basic martial arts, secret training arts would only be passed down to the true disciples. If these disciples kept exercising their bodies with the secret training arts, most of their attributes, such as strength, burst, agility, resistance, and flexibility, would be constantly increasing. 
Garen heard that the disciples of White Cloud Dojo showed their strength during various competitions and that their secret training arts were probably developed to increase their strength. Ing Air's speed was ridiculously fast, she had probably used some sort of special training arts to attain this level of speed. Garen stopped musing and turned his head to the side. From his previous angle, he could again clearly see what was under his sister's skirt. Garen could see Ing Air's long, slim legs through her sheer black tights. Of all the people to take after, why do you decide to be so much like Lomberth? Ing Air was breathing heavily as she kicked Garen in the chest. Garen's coat was thick, so Ing Air was not worried about him getting too hurt. Garen blinked his eyes and suddenly fiercely pulled at her feet with his hands. Pong Ying Air fell on his body and they both groaned in pain. Garen could smell the girl's fragrance and her soft breast pushed at the area above his chest. Garen somehow felt a little excited. Come on. Garen stood up while rubbing his stomach. What are we having for the lunch? He asked. Ying Air was not paying attention to Garen's movement and accidentally fell on his chest. She was going to blame Garen, but she started to blush again after realizing she was right above his chest. Garen was much stronger than before and she could feel his chest muscles. Unlike the last time he was tripped by his sister, Garen acted like he did not care instead of getting angry. Ing Air felt surprised after hearing Garen ask her about lunch and she hesitated for a second before standing up. I made sweet bean cake, onion pancakes, and coconut with sweet melon soup, Ing Air answered as she brushed some dust off her dress. Rate Translation Quality Chapter 10 No Title Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Garen gradually noticed the change in his sister. His adult consciousness allowed him to sense that Ing Air treated him slightly different, she seemed to take his every word very seriously. She was very careful with her actions when they were playing tag earlier, using only a very slight amount of force, as if she was worried that she might hurt him. That was how he managed to sneak an attack on her and take her down in the end. Have some lunch first. Making breakfast and lunch, going out to buy fruits, it's been a tough day for you, Ing Air. He reached out a hand to pinch his sister's cheek. There seemed to be much less acne and freckles on her red face recently it felt soft and smooth to the touch. Ugh, you. Ing Air slapped away Garen's hand. Did you take the wrong medicine? Since when did you know how to show concern towards someone else? She quizzically looked at Garen. Although she usually tried very hard to pretend as if she wasn't close with her brother, in fact, she was constantly concerned about everything related to Garen in secret. Garen's heart skipped a beat. He realized that he had gone slightly overboard with his change in character, he immediately retracted his hand without saying another word. Can't I have grown up? Do you have to act all shocked? Come on, let's eat. Dot after a rushed meal, the brother and sister duo worked together to wash the dishes, then quickly went back to their respective bedrooms, both seeming slightly off. Ing Air kept feeling as if there was a gust of wind under her skirt ever since she was accidentally exposed, and she constantly felt uneasy in front of Garen. They were step-dot-siblings after all, a relationship built through the fusion of two single-dot-parent families was not considered to be blood-dot-relations. Garen, on the other hand, was rushing back to his room to further ponder about attribute enhancements. Standing by the window, he quietly stared at the pale red attribute data in the lower part of his field of vision. If skills can indeed be enhanced, I will be able to participate in the tournament within a short period of time and win the large prize pool if I enhance my archery or sword skills. My only worry is that it would stick out like a sore thumb if a student that seldom practices suddenly participates and wins the award. Putting aside what others might think, Ing Air knows my situation well. She is aware that I don't usually practice my archery or sword skills. He rested his hand against the glass window pane. If that's the case, this idea with archery and sword skills won't work. But what about the White Cloud Dojo? I've always been attentive to the dojo's training. If I dove into the tournament, 
people would assume I have steadily accumulated the skills through observation, and it would attract less attention. Moreover, the dojo isn't the academy, it's an independent party. It wouldn't attract much attention even if something unusual or exceptional happened there. It's just that the prize money is a little on the low side. I could approach the dojo and inquire whether there are any inter.dojo tournaments. Those offer much more prize money than internal tournaments. Now that's an idea. He lightly grazed his hand over the surface of the glass, it was smooth and cool to touch. If that's the case, I'll pay a visit to the dojo this afternoon and ask a trainer about the general situation. After resting in his room for a bit, Garen quietly walked out. When he walked past his sister's room, he saw an air lying on the bed, cheeks rosy and sleeping soundly, and decided not to bother her. He gently put on his scarf and coat, then changed his shoes and walked out the door. Walking out of his cull dot dead dot sack and grasping the $300 from his uncle in his pocket, Garen hailed a black carriage and stepped into it. To the White Cloud Dojo. It's $10 yeah, the driver turned around to confirm. Yup, just go. Garen nodded in consent. Sitting in the carriage and looking out the right window, he could see buildings with pale yellow walls swiftly pass by one after another. A few minutes later, after turning a corner, the streets gradually became deserted. The previous scene was replaced by solemn, gray buildings. Shops with round arched doorways formed a row, all of them selling clocks and sundries. Garen looked closely at the skills section in his field of vision. Fighting skills. Amateur. Archery skills. Amateur. Sword skills. Amateur. If I can pass the assessment and train in the secret arts of White Cloud Dojo, I can enhance my physical quality. Couple that with my attribute points to concurrently increase my power, the effect of my training would be exponential compared to that of my peers. His wine.red eyes narrowed slightly, indicating a trace of anticipation. If I keep using attribute points to enhance a single skill, I wonder what the maximum level of increase would it reach. It's been said that different people have different talents, leading to great disparities in the effect of training in the secret arts. This could help conceal the fact that I'm enhancing my skills with attribute points. This way, even if the level of the training method is slightly inferior, it would still be able to match up to top-level training methods. Now, my only hope is that attribute points can enhance training methods like they enhance personal qualities. Recalling whom he could inquire with at the dojo, Garen could only come up with three people. Sharmila, Luoya, and the girl with short and silver hair that he trained with. There was one that left a deep impression though. The best in their batch, Erwin. He would always achieve high rankings with overwhelming skills. In addition to that, he had a mild attitude, was very humble and was well dot brought dot up. If there was someone with a 100% chance of being a formal disciple of White Cloud Dojo, it would be Erwin. I could go to Erwin. This guy would definitely be training in the dojo even if it's the weekend, no exceptions. Moreover, he would definitely be clear about these things, Garen thought. He has heard of Grand Inter.Dojo tournaments where the creme de la creme of Galantia province. In which Huishan City is located. Were chosen, and were presented awards and medals by officials. This tournament is a great way for dojos to avoid vicious competition, exhibit their talent pool and solidify their social status. The annual grand prize is almost never below $100,000, and the winner will qualify for the national tournament. While Garen was busy sorting through what he knew, the carriage gradually slowed down to a stop. Sir, the White Cloud Dojo, the driver's words interrupted Garen's train of thought. Yes, very well. He dug some notes from his pocket and handed it to the driver. Once he received his change, Garen immediately leapt off the carriage. The streets were narrow, giving a messy and complicated impression. The ground was paved with gray and black pebbles, which made it uncomfortable to step on. The heights of the buildings on both sides of the street were varied, there were red ones, gray ones, and pale yellow ones. There was a variety of patterns too. 
squares, triangles, plaid, wavy arcs, etc. It all looked a mess. Ten odd steps from Garin, a khaki dot yellow bell tower stood in the middle of the street, at its base, a round and arched doorway allowed pedestrians through. A smattering of pedestrians continuously went in and out from the doorway. There was a white wooden board on the left side of the doorway displaying a paper notice. Two people were standing there reading it. Garin walked over to the notice and checked it out. White Cloud Dojo Notice on Recruitment over the Holidays Under point 18 applicants with a student card can enjoy half dot off student fees. The specific adult fee schedule is as follows. One of the people reading the notice was a freckled teenage boy who frowned after he read it. Let's go, Jim. Martial arts training is too exhausting, and it's not as if it would serve any purpose. No matter what arts you train in, a shot from a pistol would still take you down in an instant. The other boy shook his head and both walked past the board through the doorway, leaving Garen standing there alone. To the right of the notice was the facade of a building with a grayish dot white steeple. Mahogany strips were affixed to its main entrance like a spider web. The mahogany door at the entrance was wide open, displaying the deserted scene beyond. A lone student wearing khaki dot yellow robes was sweeping inside. Garin browsed the contents of the notice, then immediately walked towards the entrance to the right. The student who was sweeping looked up at him, but kept silent. Garin went through the main entrance, the middle hall, past the khaki dot colored courtyard, and headed directly towards the innermost row of short buildings. The row of short buildings at the edge of the courtyard formed a straight, dark gray line. Garin walked towards the entrance of the leftmost house. The sound of people hitting sandbags came from inside the room. He gently opened the door. It was quite dark and empty inside, with only four black sandbags hanging on the wall at the far end. Two guys and a girl were each hitting a sandbag at a fast pace, and there were three students by the side holding towels and the like for them. An endless stream of thumps could be heard. Garin's entrance went almost unnoticed. One of the students holding a white towel turned around to look at him, and then proceeded to ignore him. This was the gym where any student could train in, but with relatively high specifications. The sandbags here were extremely heavy, only suitable for formal disciples to train with. If normal disciples tried to train with these sandbags, they would probably hurt themselves. Garin's sight swiftly fell on the leftmost boy. The boy's upper body was bare, and the bronze muscles on it were distinct. Sweat poured down his back and drenched his gray shorts. He was completely focused on the sandbag in front of him, punching it at a moderate pace, only causing it to tremble slightly at every punch. Garin walked over and waited patiently by the side. More than ten minutes later, the boy stopped. He wiped the sweat off his face and combed his short, pale yellow hair. Completely drenched in sweat. Backward. He yanked a black towel off the rack to the side and started wiping his sweat. Senior Brother Erwin, I'm Garin, one of the students in your batch. Can I ask you something? Garin took the opportunity to step forward and said aloud. The room was filled with punching sounds, he wouldn't be heard if he didn't speak up. Garin. Oh. I know you. Erwin put down the towel and gave a kind smile. Just ask anything you want. We're batchmates, no need to stand on ceremony. I'd like to inquire about the student tournaments. Ten minutes later. Garin came out of the room with a good general understanding of the tournaments. One had to first participate in the dojo's internal tournament and get a good ranking in order to participate in the tournament jointly organized by two neighboring cities. The winners would then be selected for the provincial tournament, which would eventually lead to the national tournament, the multiple stages formed a ladder dot like hierarchy. Additionally, only the internal and inter dot city tournaments would be held within a span of three weeks from start to finish, the rest would be held in the next year or in the year after that. But it's good enough if I can get my hands on some prize money. The first prize for the city tournament this time around is $10,000, 5,000 for the second and 2,000 for the third. 
I'll be able to resolve this money issue as long as I get second place. Chapter 10 No title you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Garen gradually noticed the change in his sister. His adult consciousness allowed him to sense that an heir treated him slightly different, she seemed to take his every word very seriously. She was very careful with her actions when they were playing tag earlier, using only a very slight amount of force, as if she was worried that she might hurt him. That was how he managed to sneak an attack on her and take her down in the end. Have some lunch first. Making breakfast and lunch, going out to buy fruits, it's been a tough day for you, in air. He reached out a hand to pinch his sister's cheek. There seemed to be much less acne and freckles on her red face recently, it felt soft and smooth to the touch. Ugh, you. Ing Air slapped away Garen's hand. Did you take the wrong medicine? Since when did you know how to show concern towards someone else? She quizzically looked at Garen. Although she usually tried very hard to pretend as if she wasn't close with her brother, in fact, she was constantly concerned about everything related to Garen in secret. Garen's heart skipped a beat. He realized that he had gone slightly overboard with his change in character, he immediately retracted his hand without saying another word. Can't I have grown up? Do you have to act all shocked? Come on, let's eat. After a rushed meal, the brother and sister duo worked together to wash the dishes, then quickly went back to their respective bedrooms, both seeming slightly off. Ing Air kept feeling as if there was a gust of wind under her skirt ever since she was accidentally exposed, and she constantly felt uneasy in front of Garen. They were step-dot-siblings after all, a relationship built through the fusion of two single-dot-parent families was not considered to be blood. Relations Garen, on the other hand, was rushing back to his room to further ponder about attribute enhancements. Standing by the window, he quietly stared at the pale red attribute data in the lower part of his field of vision. If skills can indeed be enhanced, I will be able to participate in the tournament within a short period of time and win the large prize pool if I enhance my archery or sword skills. My only worry is that it would stick out like a sore thumb if a student that seldom practices suddenly participates and wins the award. Putting aside what others might think, Ing Air knows my situation well. She is aware that I don't usually practice my archery or sword skills. He rested his hand against the glass window pane. If that's the case, this idea with archery and sword skills won't work. But what about the white cloud dojo? I've always been attentive to the dojo's training. If I dove into the tournament, people would assume I have steadily accumulated the skills through observation, and it would attract less attention. Moreover, the dojo isn't the academy, it's an independent party. It wouldn't attract much attention even if something unusual or exceptional happened there. It's just that the prize money is a little on the low side. I could approach the dojo and inquire whether there are any inter-dojo tournaments. Those offer much more prize money than internal tournaments. Now that's an idea. He lightly grazed his hand over the surface of the glass, it was smooth and cool to touch. If that's the case, I'll pay a visit to the dojo this afternoon and ask a trainer about the general situation. After resting in his room for a bit, Garen quietly walked out. When he walked past his sister's room, he saw Ing Air lying on the bed, cheeks rosy and sleeping soundly, and decided not to bother her. He gently put on his scarf and coat, then changed his shoes and walked out the door. Walking out of his cull. The dot sack and grasping the $300 from his uncle in his pocket, Garen hailed a black carriage and stepped into it. To the White Cloud Dojo. It's $10 yeah, the driver turned around to confirm. Yup, just go. Garen nodded in consent. Sitting in the carriage and looking out the right window, he could see buildings with pale yellow walls swiftly pass by one after another. A few minutes later, after turning a corner, the streets gradually became deserted. The previous scene was replaced by solemn, gray buildings. Shops with round arch doorways formed a row, all of them selling clocks and sundries. 
Garen looked closely at the skills section in his field of vision. Fighting skills. Amateur. Archery skills. Amateur. Sword skills. Amateur. If I can pass the assessment and train in the secret arts of White Cloud Dojo, I can enhance my physical quality. Couple that with my attribute points to concurrently increase my power, the effect of my training would be exponential compared to that of my peers. His wine.red eyes narrowed slightly, indicating a trace of anticipation. If I keep using attribute points to enhance a single skill, I wonder what the maximum level of increase would it reach. It's been said that different people have different talents, leading to great disparities in the effect of training in the secret arts. This could help conceal the fact that I'm enhancing my skills with attribute points. This way, even if the level of the training method is slightly inferior, it would still be able to match up to top-level training methods. Now, my only hope is that attribute points can enhance training methods like they enhance personal qualities. Recalling whom he could inquire with at the dojo, Garin could only come up with three people. Sharmila, Luoya, and the girl with short and silver hair that he trained with. There was one that left a deep impression though. The best in their batch, Erwin. He would always achieve high rankings with overwhelming skills. In addition to that, he had a mild attitude, was very humble and was well dot brought dot up. If there was someone with a 100% chance of being a formal disciple of White Cloud Dojo, it would be Erwin. I could go to Erwin. This guy would definitely be training in the dojo even if it's the weekend, no exceptions. Moreover, he would definitely be clear about these things, Garin thought. He has heard of Grand Inter. Dojo tournaments where the creme de la creme of Galantia province. In which Huishan City is located. Were chosen, and were presented awards and medals by officials. This tournament is a great way for dojos to avoid vicious competition, exhibit their talent pool and solidify their social status. The annual grand prize is almost never below $100,000, and the winner will qualify for the national tournament. While Garin was busy sorting through what he knew, the carriage gradually slowed down to a stop. Sir, the White Cloud Dojo, the driver's words interrupted Garin's train of thought. Yes, very well. He dug some notes from his pocket and handed it to the driver. Once he received his change, Garin immediately leapt off the carriage. Thought the streets were narrow, giving a messy and complicated impression. The ground was paved with grey and black pebbles, which made it uncomfortable to step on. The heights of the buildings on both sides of the street were varied, there were red ones, grey ones, and pale yellow ones. There was a variety of patterns too. Squares, triangles, plaid, wavy arcs, etc. It all looked a mess. Ten odd steps from Garin, a khaki dot yellow bell tower stood in the middle of the street, at its base, a round and arched doorway allowed pedestrians through. A smattering of pedestrians continuously went in and out from the doorway. There was a white wooden board on the left side of the doorway displaying a paper notice. Two people were standing there reading it. Garin walked over to the notice and checked it out. White Cloud Dojo Notice on Recruitment over the Holidays Under point 18 applicants with a student card can enjoy half dot off student fees. The specific adult fee schedule is as follows. One of the people reading the notice was a freckled teenage boy who frowned after he read it. Let's go, Jim. Martial arts training is too exhausting, and it's not as if it would serve any purpose. No matter what arts you train in, a shot from a pistol would still take you down in an instant. The other boy shook his head and both walked past the board through the doorway, leaving Garen standing there alone. To the right of the notice was the facade of a building with a grayish dot white steeple. Mahogany strips were affixed to its main entrance like a spider web. The mahogany door at the entrance was wide open, displaying the deserted scene beyond. A lone student wearing khaki dot yellow robes was sweeping inside. Garin browsed the contents of the notice, then immediately walked towards the entrance to the right. The student who was sweeping looked up at him, but kept silent. Garin went through the main entrance, the middle hall, 
past the khaki dot-colored courtyard, and headed directly towards the innermost row of short buildings. The row of short buildings at the edge of the courtyard formed a straight, dark gray line. Garen walked towards the entrance of the leftmost house. The sound of people hitting sandbags came from inside the room. He gently opened the door. It was quite dark and empty inside, with only four black sandbags hanging on the wall at the far end. Two guys and a girl were each hitting a sandbag at a fast pace, and there were three students by the side holding towels and the like for them. An endless stream of thumps could be heard. Garen's entrance went almost unnoticed. One of the students holding a white towel turned around to look at him, and then proceeded to ignore him. This was the gym where any student could train in, but with relatively high specifications. The sandbags here were extremely heavy, only suitable for formal disciples to train with. If normal disciples tried to train with these sandbags, they would probably hurt themselves. Garen's sight swiftly fell on the leftmost boy. The boy's upper body was bare, and the bronze muscles on it were distinct. Sweat poured down his back and drenched his gray shorts. He was completely focused on the sandbag in front of him, punching it at a moderate pace, only causing it to tremble slightly at every punch. Garen walked over and waited patiently by the side. More than ten minutes later, the boy stopped. He wiped the sweat off his face and combed his short, pale yellow hair. Completely drenched in sweat. Backward. He yanked a black towel off the rack to the side and started wiping his sweat. Senior Brother Erwin, I'm Garen, one of the students in your batch. Can I ask you something? Garen took the opportunity to step forward and said aloud. The room was filled with punching sounds, he wouldn't be heard if he didn't speak up. Garen. Oh. I know you. Erwin put down the towel and gave a kind smile. Just ask anything you want. We're batchmates, no need to stand on ceremony. I'd like to inquire about the student tournaments. Ten minutes later. Garen came out of the room with a good general understanding of the tournaments. One had to first participate in the dojo's internal tournament and get a good ranking in order to participate in the tournament jointly organized by two neighboring cities. The winners would then be selected for the provincial tournament, which would eventually lead to the national tournament, the multiple stages formed a ladder-like hierarchy. Additionally, only the internal and inter-city tournaments would be held within a span of three weeks from start to finish, the rest would be held in the next year or in the year after that. But it's good enough if I can get my hands on some prize money. The first prize for the city tournament this time around is $10,000, $5,000 for the second and $2,000 for the third. I'll be able to resolve this money issue as long as I get second place.